Welcome to the Adventure Travel Show podcast. I'm your host, Kit Parks. I have safely made it back from my epic Middle East exploration, and I'm looking forward to telling you all about it on the Active Travel Adventures podcast. That's my companion podcast, if you're not familiar with it, and it runs on opposite Thursdays to this one. As you can imagine, after being gone for three months, I came home to a huge rat's nest of pressing work and family problems, projects that need to be addressed that have been put off, etc. In my real life, I'm a landlord. That pays the bills. Podcasting, this, this is my labor of love. So I'm going to take a few weeks and maybe even a little longer trying to get things back into gear. And that, plus it being the holiday season, I'm going to need some time to catch my breath and reconnect with my family, friends, and tenants. So while I'm doing so, I hope you'll enjoy delving into the 15 benefits of adventure travel, which first appeared on the Active Travel Adventures podcast in December of 2017. It's a funny thing coming home. Nothing changes. Everything looks the same, feels the same, even smells the same. You realize what's changed is you. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Welcome to the Active Travel Adventures podcast. I'm your host, Kit Parks. Today, we're going to focus on the many benefits of adventure travel, 15 to be exact, plus a bonus 16th that I can't prove, but I truly believe is one of the top benefits. First, let's define adventure travel. Adventure travel means multi-day active vacations that include activities like hiking, cycling, paddling, or some combination of physical exertion, usually with a cultural twist. Adventure travel offers multiple advantages over traditional package tours and beach vacations. Here are 15 key benefits you get from adventure travel and why you should include active travel in your vacations. Be sure to stay tuned to the end to hear about the special anecdotal bonus benefit via a short interview that will give you even more inspiration to make the coming year your most adventurous yet. As many of you know, I was late getting into adventure travel. I had no idea that people like me could even do these kinds of amazing trips. Like all of my guests, once I got started, I got hooked. At my age, I'm also feeling a race against the clock. A couple of years ago, I started noticing my knees for the first time. They don't hurt. I just found that I, I'm aware of them now. And even this last week, when I go outside now that it's getting cold, my knees are now aware of the cold. So these are all new things. So this I'm like beat the clock to do these travels that I want to do. There are just so many cool places to go and see, and I'm anxious to get in as many trips as possible. My mom, spoiler alert, she's one of my bonus interviewees at the end of the list, has always advised me not to put off travel. So many of her friends waited too long, and then they weren't able or mobile enough to take the trips they'd always dreamt about and saved for. Don't let that be you. If you're worried you're not fit enough, use the difficulty ratings I post for each of the adventures. Go poke around the activetraveladventures.com website. I've got everything categorized so you can look by activity level, have the physical difficulty, what kind of accommodations, whether you can do it by yourself with a guide or self-guided. So I've spent a lot of time trying to break everything out to make it easy for you to find the trips that would be most suitable for you. And you can always send me an email and ask me questions. I'll be happy to help. So here are the 15 key benefits of adventure travel. Number one, adventure travel offers life-changing experiences. Adventure travel pushes you outside of your comfort zone. It puts you in unfamiliar situations and challenges you to test your mettle. In the last millennia, the typical adventure traveler was a young gap year kid bungee jumping off of a cliff. In those days, adventure travel often meant risk. Not anymore. Today's adventure traveler is often over 50, super busy with a high-stress job, has more disposable income, and when vacationing, instead of seeking risk, instead seeks meaningful and life-changing experiences and finds that adventure travel delivers. So instead of bungee jumping, today adventure travel means climbing Machu Picchu, hiking between the medieval villages along the West Highland Way in Scotland, or rafting the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. Perhaps it's biking the gentle path alongside the Danube River from Vienna to Budapest. Today's adventure travel combines physical exertion with mixing with the locals and fellow global adventure travelers. You savor unique foods and customs so very different from home. You come home changed and recharged and ready to start planning your next epic adventure. Adventure travel is addicting. Finally, something it's okay to get addicted to. Number two. Personal growth and challenge. Even on guided tours, you'll be pushed physically and mentally. You find out what you're made of. 
and you learn that you can do much more than you ever thought you could. Late in the afternoon, you're tired and your feet hurt, but you still have a couple miles to go. You manage to pull resources from deep within and you make it. That evening, you relax with a cold one and relive the day's experience with your fellow adventurers. And then the next day, you wake up raring to get that euphoric feeling again. Your best stories come from overcoming the obstacles and getting yourself out of a mess or otherwise problem solving. With adventure travel, you get to test your mettle and see what you're made of. This is one of my personal favorite benefits. When I look back on my trips, my fondest memories are usually when I battled and won under the most trying of circumstances, whether it was Jamie's birthday hike in the foulest of weather in Scotland or the interminable scree on the volcano San Cristobal in Nicaragua. Once you beat the obstacle, you're more alive and more confident. It's exhilarating. Adventure travel is not just about the climb or the ride. It's about the pleasure, satisfaction, indeed the delight I find in becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. With adventure travel, you learn determination, improve your problem-solving skills, and develop grit. Number three, sense of accomplishment and achievement. Adventure travel is not for wimps. Days can be physically challenging. You often deal with rain, cold, or wind, which can mean mud and chills. You have to get from one place to the next. So even when you're tired and dirty, you have to forge ahead to that day's destination. If traveling solo, you develop the mental strength to get you there all on your own. In a group, you get the support of the others to cheer you on to the day's finish line. At the end of the day, you look back and wonder at what you achieved and you feel bigger inside. Adventure travel is a great confidence builder. You learn that you're capable of far more than you ever dreamt and develop tremendous coping skills as you meet new obstacles and challenges. Adventure travel encourages you to seize new opportunities and build your confidence. Number four, builds gratitude and mindfulness. Active travel adventures often equals slow travel. You have time to really see and study your surroundings. Your mind finally has a chance to quiet down. Adventure travel can be a form of active meditation throughout much of the day. Your heart may burst with the joy of just simply being alive. You feel pride in your body being able to perform. When roughing it, you learn to reappreciate things like hot water, toilets, beds, full meals. That gratitude carries on when you return home, at least for a while. I consider the feeling of gratitude and the appreciation of the, the little things in my day-to-day -day life one of the key benefits of adventure traveling particularly if camping or backpacking when luxuries are basically non-existent. Number five, you see inaccessible landscapes. You often get to see landscapes you couldn't see unless your body can motor you there. Many of the planet's awe-inspiring landscapes don't have a road to them, so it's up to you and your body to get you there. And because most people are unable or unwilling to challenge themselves, once you've arrived, you rarely fight any crowds. Number six, nature improves your brain. We get distracted and multitask all day, and that can give us all a bit of attention deficit disorder. When on an adventure trip, you naturally stay in the moment. This allows your brain to rest, and I believe, heal. So consider adventure travel attention restoration therapy. One study found that being in nature helps restore the higher cognitive functions that we require in today's device-driven days. This study found a 50% increase in creativity and problem-solving skills after only three days of hiking. Researchers aren't sure if it was being in nature or being disconnected or a combination, but you get both with adventure travel. There is no doubt in my mind that the slow, steady pace of adventure travel helps your brain sort through things so you see things more clearly and helps you to find the solutions to your current dilemmas. In addition, another study found that aerobic activity actually increases your brain's hippocampus, and that aids in memory retention. I'm sure we can all use a little bit of help in that department. Some doctors are now even handing out park prescriptions to get their patients outside to get these benefits. Plus, studies have also shown that getting out in nature makes us all a little nicer. Number seven, adventure travel improves mental health and reduces stress. Not only does our brain improve, being out in nature improves our mental health and reduces depression and anxiety. I can actually feel it lower my blood pressure and calm my mind when I'm out in the woods. 
I've also noticed since I started doing adventure travel that I handle stress back at home much better. Today, I let new problems roll off me much better than I ever have, and I'm thrilled to say that sometimes I'm actually starting to react to this fabulous, almost disembodied observation of whatever the current crisis is, rather than getting all panicky or upset. This allows me to calmly deal with whatever the problem is in a detached manner. I've even stopped losing sleep over my problems. Instead, I can spend my time solving the problem instead of stressing over it and worrying about it. Huge time saver. With adventure travel, you build resilience that will help you to face the trying times with far less stress. I'm going to put a link to the, there's a great Wall Street Journal article on resilience. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Number eight, you learn new things. Whether learning new skills to actually do the adventure, like backpacking, or learning about new cultures or history, adventure travel broadens your mind. Unlike boring history textbooks, when you get to actually see where history took place and meet people directly affected by it, history now becomes personal to you. So you're interested in learning more about the people, culture, and history where your adventure travel takes you. As an example, remember back on the Mont Blanc episode number seven with Linda, her story about her B&B host grandmother who helped the Jews during World War II shows you how adventure travel can bring to life history. Not to mention that adventure travel makes learning fun. Adventure travel both satisfies and encourages your curiosity. Number nine, adventure travel is more meaningful than package tour or beach resort vacation travel. Compared to sit on the beach with a fruity drink vacations or even the large group bus tours where you zoom from one stop to the next to snap a photo, with adventure travel, you mix with the locals and engage with the culture of the place that you're visiting. Plus, you disperse your spending across villages with the local merchants, which better helps the local economy. Because of your interactions with the locals, you return home with a better understanding of the culture, which expands your worldview. Number 10. You get to relive your travels forever. Like all travel, adventure travel lets you enjoy your trip before, during, and after. Unlike the stuff we buy that's meaningless a short time later, you get to relish your travels forever. Initially, you get the thrill when you first discover and or dream about an adventure. Then you get the fun of figuring out how and when you're going to do it. Next, you have the anticipation and excitement leading up to your adventure. And then, yay, you finally get the joy and sense of accomplishment from actually doing the adventure. And finally, for years to come, whether telling your stories or looking at your photos, you get to relive your adventure over and over again. Try that with a fancy pair of shoes. Number 11, you meet cool people. When you meet people on the trail or in your group, you're self-selected as kindred spirits on the same adventure. So bonding is super quick. Conversations are deeper, quicker. Lifetime friendships are often formed. As popular as adventure travel is, most people still don't or can't do it. So you end up forming a bit of a club. Number 12, great stories to tell. You won't run out of exciting and interesting stories to tell, both at home and with your fellow travelers. We humans have always made connections and formed friendships via storytelling, and your stories are going to be super cool. Your friends and colleagues will be amazed. Number 13, you return home healthier and energized. Have you ever returned home from a vacation exhausted? Unlike traditional vacations, adventure travel makes you stronger physically and mentally. You are unlikely to have put on five pounds, unless it's muscle. Also, by exercising much of the day on your trip, your metabolism and energy levels explode. When you adventure travel, you won't need a vacation from your vacation. Number 14. Adventure travel is still a pretty unique experience. Most people still do the traditional package type tours, so you stand out from the pack when you become an adventure traveler. At the water cooler, which colleague's vacation will you remember? The one who sipped rum drinks on the beach in the Bahamas, or the one who hiked the epic Tour de Mont Blanc through France, Switzerland, and Italy for 12 days? Of which colleague will you ask the most questions and actually care about the answers? Number 15. Adventure travel is fun. 
You get to feel like a kid again, whether you're scrambling up a boulder in Patagonia or bouncing through the Tully River Rapids on a raft. They're back. Those carefree days of youth are back. It's okay again to stomp in the puddles. Just like the old days, all you have to do is be home by dinner. Except this time, quote-unquote, home could be a mountain hut in Sweden as you hike the Kunzladen Trail. The husband of one of our upcoming interviewees, Jeremy Chambers, says that adventure travel is like camp for adults. Before we get to our special 16th benefit, let's summarize the benefits so far. Number one, it's a life-changing experience. Two, it offers personal growth and challenges. Three, gives you a sense of accomplishment and achievement. Four, helps you to feel gratitude and improve mindfulness. Five, enables you to see incredible, often inaccessible landscapes. Six, improves your brain. Seven, improves your mental health and reduces stress. Eight, you learn new things. Nine, is more meaningful than package tour travel. 10, you get to relive your travels forever. 11, you meet really cool people and bond quickly. 12, gives you great stories to tell. 13, you return home healthier and energized, not exhausted. 14, it's still a pretty unique experience. 15, it's simply fun. And finally, my anecdotal benefit number 16, adventure travel improves your quality and your quantity of life. To support my contention that adventure travel adds to the quality and the quantity of life, I want to share with you some clips and stories that I have from some upcoming interviews. First up is 86-year-old Sandra Long. Sandy was always the adventurous type and has visited more than 100 countries. She hit her 60s, she discovered ballroom dancing, and the physical fitness she got from doing that enabled her to step up her adventure travels a notch. Her increased physical fitness due to the ballroom dancing combined with her curiosity and love of adventure has enabled Sandy to continue to do adventure travel even into her 80s. At the age of 82, she hiked Patagonia for Pete's sake as well as Switzerland, two incredibly difficult hikes. I've got one of her dancing clips on today's website page. Be sure to check that out. This woman can still to this day do splits and lifts. You've got to see this to believe it. I find it incredible and heartening that Sandy can still do all these things at an age when many people can't even drive anymore. So her combination of great attitude, curiosity, daily walks, yoga, and ballroom dancing is making Sandy live decades younger than her body age. Up next is my mom, who, to the best of my recollection, growing up, she was too busy raising all of us kids. She never had time for herself, never went to the gym, never exercised, as far as I can remember. And then once we were finally old enough to look after ourselves a little bit more, when she was in her 50s, she picked up tennis. And tennis segued to adventure. Once she started getting fit and started getting active, that opened up the whole world to her. In their retirement years, she and my dad hiked, biked, and paddled all over America and had a ball. They lived a active, exciting, and vibrant retirement years. My mom is now 92 years old, still driving, still sharp as a tack. And you say, oh, great genes. She had great genes. Yes, and I'm sure I got great genes from her. But she outlived her mom by a couple of decades. And my father outlived his dad by three decades and his mom by a decade. So it's not just genes. Keeping active and keeping that curiosity. It's not just going to the gym activity or it's the challenge that comes with adventure travel is what I believe is the key to not just longevity, but quality longevity. So while I can't prove it, I'm convinced that being adventurous adds to both the quality and the quantity of life. Sure, being fit helps, but I believe that the stimulation of nature, the sense of accomplishment that you get with adventure travel, exponentially enhances our retirement years far more than any gym or golf course could. Adventure travel defies you from becoming old. Your body and mind simply don't match up with your age. All I know is that the retired folks that I know that are doing adventure travel seem to have a greater joy of life and a greater quality of life. They exude a vitality and zest for life that I don't see with people that just hang out in retirement at the golf course. And I don't believe going to the gym or playing golf provides the same benefits as adventure travel. 
Like outlined earlier, adventure travel helps to keep your brain and your memory sharp. Being in nature helps reduce stress, a major cause of illnesses, and the activity and constant challenge of using your muscles, balance, and stamina in different terrain and situations keeps your body and brain in its best possible shape. And the beauty is, is that you can start now, even if you've never done anything like this before. I used to be a slug, but as my 50th birthday was closing in, that milestone made me want to pause and ask myself, what kind of life did I want for the back half? That slowed down life that I see most folks do, or the incredible retirement of my parents. I signed up for a sprint triathlon, even though at the time I didn't run, bike, or swim. I found online a 12 weeks from couch potato to triathlete that had a training schedule that I followed to a T. In the beginning, I had to walk the distance of two light posts along my neighborhood streets for every one post I was able to run. But eventually, my body was able to run continuously. I had similar struggles with the biking and definitely with the swimming because I still stink at swimming. But I was able to do my competition without embarrassing myself, and that was my goal. Two years later, I decided I wanted to learn how to backpack and took baby steps once again to get my back and my feet used to carrying weight. This is why I tell you, if I can do it, so can you. Just take that first baby step and believe in yourself. It will change your life in all the most positive ways if you get this ball rolling. I promise. I swear the people I know who do adventure travel exude far more zest and vitality than those that stay in shape in traditional ways. Adventure travel challenges you in so many more ways than just challenging your body. What ballroom dancing did for Sandra, tennis did for my mom and dad. It became the catalyst and springboard for their outdoor adventures. When mom was 72, she had a stroke and soon gave up tennis. So they channeled their energies into activities that she could do and started focusing more on the outdoor adventures like canoeing, kayaking, hiking, and cycling. So they traded in their tennis rackets for hiking boots, bike helmets, and paddles and headed into the woods. I love a story my mom tells. Here's mom. Oh, it was funny. We'd be driving down the highway (laughs) and we had two bikes on the back of the car and the canoe and the kayak on the top, the pendulum kayak on the top. And so they thought there were some young people taking a nice vacation. <laughs> and they'd drop past us, and then they'd look at us and laugh. <laughs> because we had so much equipment for the trip. <laughs> Mom and Dad would get such a kick out of seeing the funny expressions on the people that would pass them on the highway once they saw how old they were after seeing all that equipment in their car. It just cracked them up. And, importantly, it made them feel really good about themselves. I should note that they didn't even buy mountain bikes until they were well into their 70s and continued to do so into their 80s. I remember mom and dad laughing as they told me the story about buying the bikes and how the clerk's eyes were as big as saucers when he found out that the bikes were for them. After her stroke, when mom was no longer able to play tennis, she... Uh, switched her gears and started doing more outdoor adventures such as hiking, paddling, and cycling. Here's mom. So I took the other things and I could I could canoe or kayak. I couldn't kayak all day long, but I could canoe nine hours because in rivers you can sort of if you need a rest. You just don't paddle. I just love how they modified their activities based on what their bodies were able to do so that they were able to keep doing things for decades longer than most people would even attempt to do such things. I asked Mama if she had any thoughts for my listeners. But anyway, life has been good. And most of it, I remember the best times of my life are outdoors. So I suggest anybody that wants to live a long, happy life take up adventure travels. Thank you. If you want a rocket like Mom, take her advice and take on adventure travel. You will not regret it. I have a couple of hiking girlfriends that are into their 70s who, if you see them from behind, you think they're in their 20s. And when they turn around, you go, ah, because you're shocked. I want people to go, ah, at me for a long time to come. I found that the younger people are pretty accepting of me, and I've made many new friends in their late 20s and 30s. And sometimes they're the ones that initiate the adventure. On my Nicaragua trip, I found further inspiration. There were three men in their 70s, and eight of us were older than 55. And this was a small group, maybe like a dozen. I thought my parents were just flukes, but these folks gave me inspiration. And I started thinking about all the people of a certain age that I had been meeting on the trail. I was like, well, shoot, I can do this, hopefully for decades to come, just like them. 
Nonetheless, I do feel a sense of urgency to do as much as I can now, just in case I should get injured or sick. We only get one shot in this life. Let's make it epic. To hijack a famous scene, I want people to point at you and me and say, I'll have what she's having because they want our vitality, our joy of life, and the fun experiences that we're getting from adventure travel. As we enter the new year, let's all build up our adventure mojo so that we too can have Sandy, my mom's vitality and quality of life. If you haven't yet dipped your toes into adventure travel, take that first step and pick a place to go. I suggest starting with a guided tour that matches your physical level and interest so you'll have a guide and supportive group with you to encourage you along the way. I want to challenge each of you, no matter what your adventure travel level is, is to do a plus one outside of your comfort level. For some, this will mean their first long weekend of adventure, others their first adventure trip outside of the country or with a different language. Others yet might might mean experimenting with solo travel, and still others might be leaping to self-guided travel. Whatever your comfort level is, just take things up one notch. Not a big leap, just a little notch. This is how you build your confidence and get that sense of accomplishment and euphoria when you rise to the occasion. It's how you grow. You can do this. So today, ask to join the Facebook Active Travel Adventures group page, and I'll pop back in okay, and then post your upcoming year's challenge. What are you going to do? What's going to be your plus one? Then start planning. The Active Travel Adventures directory page can help. Feel free to email if you missed any of the earlier travel planners. I'm happy to share them. There's a huge world out there full of adventure. And be sure to keep us posted on Facebook on your progress. We are all there to encourage you. I wish all of you a happy, healthy, and adventurous new year. I'm looking forward to getting to know you in our Add a Facebook group. Or you can always email me at kit at activetraveladventures.com. I really do love hearing from you. If you've enjoyed this post, please share it with your friends. I love this quote by Neil Donald Walsh. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Think about that. That's what adventure travel does for you. Until next time, adventure on.